Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. This time we're going to be taking the Thermalrite HR10 2280 Pro versus the Gecko Cooler from Akasar. Let's see which one actually is better. Okay then, so what's the premise of actually having a, let's just say, a cooler with a blower or a fan on it for your MVME? Right, let's take this MVME by here from a pacer for instance now this is gen 5 so it does generate more heat than gen 4 now remember that you need to realize it's not the NAND that actually generates the heat it's the controller so this without the heat sink reaches 86 celsius but at those type of temperatures it's rated for 85 but once it goes above 85 celsius the overall performance of this starts to degrade that's because it's 85 is within its actual operation temperature but if we take one of these and we put it on there what would it actually do for performance well let me tell you something this wouldn't do anything for overall read and write speeds it just won't i know that for a fact these won't benefit anything when it comes to the overall read and write but what it will do is keep the overall mvme at a such a low temperature that it wouldn't have problems with degrading over time so if we take the uh, hr10 uh, 228 Pro from Thermalrite, which is a basically a heat pipe with fins and a fan. So let's take this out and take a look. Now, as you can see, this this particular one has two massive heat pipes, but that. then it's got a fin stack with this tiny little fan, which the fan actually is a 30 mil. Yeah, 30 mil fan. Look how small that is. That is tiny. That is just dirty. Now. For the overall uh, fan speed, this actually runs a 6,000 RPM, but it's whisper quiet at those type of uh, those type of speeds. And when it comes to the overall connector, it is PWM, four pin, which is nice. It does have 12 volt DC. And then of course it's rated at 0 0.05 amps. So the big major difference is actually is that this has a heat pipe with two and fin stacks. So I'll put that below that. And then let's take this one below, which is called a Gecko Cooler from Akasar. This one is more of a generalized look at a basic blower type cooler. Now, as you can see, this doesn't have heat pipes. This just has a heat sink, which is below that. And then it has this blower uh, fan type. And then of course, that's where the dissipation comes from. It's this blowing the air from here, the shroud, that's what it does. It blows it from there to there over the heat sink. But this one actually runs a lot uh, when it comes to the overall uh, RPM of the fan, this one actually runs a lot slower than this one. This one runs at 3400 RPM, where this one is 6000 RPM. So, I'm going to put both of these on the Gen 5 MVME from a pacer and let's see which one actually performs better. Okay, and so when it comes to the overall thermals, now I've run actually four different tests. Uh, easy disc mark which this is for the akasar the idle to 34 with a max of 51 hd tune pro 34 celsius at idle with a max of 59 uh, 49 Bristol disc mark the idle to 34 with a max of 51 and as ssd the idles with 34 with a max of 45 celsius okay so for the thermal right MVME heatsink. What I will tell you is that the overall gaps and margins between the overall thermals is going to be is actually might surprise you, but it might not. So thermal right for ease disc mark. The idles are 32 with a max of 47 Celsius. HD Tune Pro idles 32 with a max of 44. Crystal disc mark idle 32 with a max of 49. And as SSD idle 32 with a max of 45 Celsius. Okay then, so what does all this mean? Look, all I'm going to tell you is that any NVMe you buy, it doesn't matter if it's Gen 5 or Gen 4, the overall, the heatsink that comes with your motherboards generally will actually do the job, no problem. So I wouldn't say that these aren't worth it because aesthetically, and yes, they will keep the NVMe a lot cooler, but aesthetically they will look more pleasing. Well, I, well, I, I mean, that's up to you really. I mean, to be honest, yeah. I, I personally, me, that's me uh, personally, I use the heatsink that comes with my motherboard. So this type of 
aesthetics doesn't really it's it, not really my thing but of course if you're gonna buy one or the other then my overall opinion now whether Akasa or Thermorite take that that's completely up to them but this one from Thermorite is the overall better value because this one is £10 this one is £25 so if you're gonna buy a, an NVMe heatsink, I generally look at Thermorite. But if you're looking for something that, well, I mean, if you've got a small form factor case, but you can't fa actually fit something as bulky as this one, but this one you can, then maybe this one's a good option. But all I'm gonna tell you is that your NVMEs don't need this type of cooling because unless we actually get to like Gen 6 or Gen 7 where the overall NVMe starts drawing like stupid amounts of heat, like over 100 Celsius, then these aren't actually, there's no point in buying them. They're just made to statically please consumers. But me personally, I don't really care for NVMe heat sinks because the ones on your motherboards, they actually do the job just well so <laughs> but look i thought i'd do this video because i've had this one now from thermorite for ages and because i haven't actually had an mvme like a gen 5 to actually test it that's why i've uh, been stuck on my shelf but then akasar sent this one out and i thought i didn't want to do a note just a just a review on this one i thought that putting this against another one another brand to show you that these don't yes they keep things cooler but they generally don't these aren't needed nvme heat sinks with fans aren't needed so anything you see from like team group or anything they aren't needed the ones that come on your motherboards are just as good as these. They will dissipate the heat, no problems. And remember, it's not a NAND that actually generates the heat, it's the controller itself. So if you get a good quality Gen 5 that has a very good controller on it, that's, that is what generates the heat, it's not the NAND. It's the controller that generates the heat. But that's one of them things. Look, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed this actually, you know, a little bit more different viewing angle and a different feel to the videos. I'm trying to improve each video and I'm trying to try out new things when it comes to like filming and stuff. So I hope you enjoyed the video at least, or at least you take something from this is that you don't need to waste money on an MVM he heatsink. But yeah, don't forget to subscribe because I've got loads of stuff coming. I've got load i got two i got two products coming from id cooling two products coming from uh pc cooler i've got products coming from thermal grizzly thermal right i've also uh got in contact with gamax they do actually do monitors so they'll be i'm hoping to get one of their 34 inch ultra wides so you guys can actually see uh i've also got stuff coming more stuff coming from target i'm hoping to get a motherboard on gigabyte and that's yeah that so i got loads of stuff coming so make sure you subscribe and as always i hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and week ahead week ahead of you this is richard from welsh tech good bye